All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Urban Garden 2020. So today is January 2nd. Yesterday was New Year's Day, January 1st. And here in Birmingham, Alabama, we had a high right at 80 degrees with uh, severe thunderstorms possible. It looks like most of the bad weather went north of us. But um, anybody who got damaged, I hope um, everything, everyone's safe and everything's covered and just... Um, when storms come through, we we'll always send our thoughts and prayers out because, you know, storms do not discriminate. They can hit any person, any place, any community, any time. So it just reminds us that, you know, we're all equal and uh, susceptible to the same fate. So anyway, yesterday, like I said, was around 80 degrees. Storms, it's still wet, a little gloomy outside. When this front blows through, the temperature is going to drop. So last night, I think the high... When I went to bed, it was around 64, 65 degrees. Um, right now, it's about 61. And, you know, the high was at midnight last night. And it's just going to slowly drop. And as soon as these clouds break, temperature is going to plummet. I think the low tonight is around 30. And there's a chance, actually, of snow flurries, um, you know, in the wee morning hours. So here in Alabama, that's kind of the normal. You got severe storms, very hot, turbulent weather, and then... Uh, freeze afterwards so we brought our plants in we've had them sitting out here in the drive uh, just you know enjoying the warm weather and the uh, rain so we brought them in the peppers they've still been putting out as you see we've got peppers all over the place so what I've done I brought most everything in planters inside so all the peppers the banana even the tomato over there in the back uh, you can see there yeah, they're still tomatoes, uh, some ripening, a few green. A couple of days ago, there were some yellow little uh, flowers on the tomatoes. Our, um, can't remember what this is, honeysuckle, sorry. It's uh, right there, you know, it's just grown like crazy since we put it in. So, anyway, so what I've done, I brought all the plants in. I trimmed back the banana tree or banana plant. A little bit trim the leaves all off some of the dead leaves off and our bananas outside we mulched uh, the bananas we mulched the fig we mulched the blackberry and we mulched the hydrangeas so I was gonna mulch the crepe myrtles but I may do that tomorrow I may make a run to Lowe's and mulch them really good I pruned those back a couple of days ago and got those ready for the winter so what we're looking at, we just took some uh, pine bark mulch and uh, mulched everything down really good. And the reason we do that, one, uh, it helps them maintain moisture. It holds the moisture in. And when we bring these in for the winter, we're going to have a little bit of cold weather. So they're going to be in the garage getting minimal light. I do have a grow light there. I bought another bulb the other day and drop light. So I'm going to bring it out and hang it somewhere up here in the top of the garage or somewhere in the garage maybe off the garage door when we close it or somewhere where it won't get moved when I open the garage door but anyway so we want the soil to remain you know just slightly damp but not wet so when we water we want that water to last and we want it to kind of maintain that moisture so the plant can stay alive but it's not going to be doing a lot of growing when the temperature drops, even in the garage. Probably won't be below freezing, but it's going to be cold in here. So, you know, I may prune these uh, peppers and all back a little more, pick all the peppers off of them, and, you know, set them up for the winter. The, um, see there's a fern back there in the back. There's also an African lily there. I just mulched everything, you know, just so I won't have to water as much. You know, I can lightly water and let that set in. It's going to hold you know the moisture in plus again this is going to break down the tomato plant probably won't survive uh it won't do well into the spring so what i'm going to try to do is bring it along as far as possible with the grow lamp and then as close to spring as we can get i'm going to take some good cuttings off of it because it's uh, indeterminate it's a vine it's going to grow until the winter kills it so um just like the peppers i mean the peppers are perennials just the winter kills them back here in our climate but um, yeah, so the uh, mulch has another purpose and it is feeding the plant. So that material is gonna break down. Um, it's gonna, you know, gonna turn into a smaller, more, you know, it's pure organic material. So that's gonna break down eventually. Next year, it's gonna feed the plants. 
So, you know, we put it on winter to hold, over winter to hold the moisture in, just like we do the outdoor plants. You know, it keeps the frost off the root base and the main stalk of the, you know, stems of the plants. So that helps prevent them from being damaged by, you know, the cold frost or, you know, maybe this year we'll get snow. Who knows? Um, you never know in Alabama. It could be April and come, like, the heaviest snow we've seen in years, or it could just be like it is now you know I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt and I'm sweating out here moving these plants around so but yeah so that uh, mulch is going to break down into organic material that's going to you know, feed the microbes they're going to break it down even further and they're going to um, you know break that down into usable uh, matter for nutrients for the plants so you know we may get when we get close to spring we'll go through and put some uh, fertilizer on these Probably some blood mill, bone mill, um, maybe some other uh, top dressing, you know, and then we'll use our um, liquid fertilizer, you know, throughout the summer, throughout the growing season, just to, you know, keep them uh, producing. So out here, I've also moved, I didn't bring all the crepe myrtles in because I don't want those in warmer weather. But what I did do, I stacked them up against the retaining wall, and even the ones I don't think will make it, I put over here, I mulched them. And, well, there's one or two that don't have anything in them, but um, most of these crepe myrtle cuttings I took early in the year. They actually sprouted back out some. You can see some still have a leaf or two on them like that one. Um, there's another one that got a little sprout out before uh, fall got here. And, you know, they're hanging on. And the one thing I've learned about a lot of plants, even your crepe myrtles and whatnot, especially crepe myrtles, is you may give up on them, throw them out, if they still have the soil around the base, you'll come back next year and there will be a plant growing. A crepe myrtle tree or bush or shrub or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, sometimes, even if you think it's dead and gone, put it outside, uh, let it get, you know, let nature feed it and water it. And, you know, come spring, you'll probably be surprised at the hardiness of some of these. Just like, we'll walk in here, oh, there's the uh, hibiscus. We've um, got that bad dude, or she's right there. She's still blooming, <laughs> you know, and, you know, she'll be fine, I think, you know, as long as she stays warm. There's one small one last year that's in the ground that I thought was dead, so I just ignored it, and, you know, this spring or this past summer, it just sprouted up, and there's all the banana clippings, uh, leaves that I clipped off the banana. I'm going to put those in the worm bin over there, and right here, great... Uh, example of something I thought was dead. So this uh, avocado right here, it grew this main stem up to right here. It had a nice little leaf coming out and I forgot about it. I let it dry out and I thought it had died. Well the end of it did die. The main stem was brown so I just took it and set it outside out back uh, on a barrel and it got, uh, put it in actually a little Tupperware dish, and it collected rain, you know, up to about right here, and if you watch one of the other videos, um, I, I may have it in there, but anyway, so during the spring, or throughout the summer, it sat there, and I just kind of forgot about it, and then at the end of the summer, I looked, and there were leaves sprouting out in a little green section, and now that has grown that vine has come on out and it sprouted leaves. So I'm gonna take this and put directly under that grow light. And I didn't mulch it too heavy, but I'm gonna come back, mainly because I ran out of mulch. I'm gonna come back and put some leaf mulch in. And you know, we saved our bagging from our last cut of the year, cutting up leaves and stuff. And then there's some on the ground where I've got to um, sweep up, but I'll sweep all that up and finish mulching some things with it. But uh, yeah, that avocado has come out, and we may never get true avocados off of it. You know, I think it takes 10 years before it becomes viable for fruit, but, you know, it's just uh, interesting to grow things. I mean, the banana trees, the ones outside, this one right here. Uh, I've got one inside by the window with the palm. Uh, you know, I'm probably never going to get bananas, but they do add that kind of tropical, lush uh, appearance to the landscape, so... This is what we're doing getting ready for winter. Again, that we've got them all mulched. We've got them inside. We'll probably prune them back throughout the next couple of days. Um, I've had a few days off here, so I've kind of been enjoying that, doing some work outside. Again, there she is. We'll mulch that a little bit. 
the bees out back. I've uh, kind of closed them up. I just have the main entrance uh, open a little bit, and they were actually really busy the last few days. I was set out there and watched them, and I don't know where they were getting all the pollen from. Probably from the dandelions, and uh, my neighbor has all these little purple flowers. Their backyard hadn't been cut for a while, and this just has all these little purple flowers sprouted up, and I see the bees just going everywhere, and you know, there are little white flowers in the yard too when you leave it so i'm trying to you know let those grow so the bees are bringing in pollen still and with you know highs near 80 yeah they're going to be active so i did put some uh dry sugar in the top in a feeder so they'll have a little bit of that and i do have some uh pollen uh patties that i can give them a little bit later too if they need it so anyway you can uh if you have a place indoors that you can move your plants if it's by a window somewhere sunny if you have a garage if you have a basement we have a basement but that's just been a hassle i've got uh one banana tree down there i've got uh one pepper plant i've got a bunch of uh bamboo lucky bamboos that i put in just some uh, aerated water with some uh hydro hydrogen those little clay balls um down there but it's a pain toting the water down so today and tomorrow as i have time I'll probably bring those all back up and put them in the garage just because it's easier and, you know, a lot less hassle and I can just uh, access them a lot better so I know I can take care of them better. So, you know, if you've got a place, a sunny spot, you can grow banana plants. I've got that majestic palm inside. Um, you know, you can take the hibiscus. You can bring those in. I've got to take that tiller back to my friend. She let me borrow it and I tilled up my spot, made my raised bed, and it's been sitting there. I need to take it and pressure wash it off because it's got dust on it so get that cleaned up get that back to her um but yeah so you know you can garden throughout the winter and you know stuff that you didn't think you could uh, grow you can definitely bring inside and keep alive it may not just thrive and produce peppers you know we're january 2nd and we've got peppers to make if i would have took care of these and you know just a little more attention to them yeah we could be having tomatoes right now uh well we do have tomatoes right now but we could have a plentiful crop of tomatoes so um you know don't let winter fool you into thinking that you know gardening season is over uh there's a lot of prep work for next year that you can be doing now just little bits at a time we may go to lowe's later too i, I need to get some more mulch if i don't have enough from sweeping up all this uh to finish mulching but you know, a lot of stuff's on sale in the fall and winter, you know, starting in September. So, you know, just because it's the end of your outdoor growing season does not mean gardening is at an end. If you enjoy it, you can do it year-round. So that's about all I've got going right now. I'm going to do a little more work. I'm going to clean up a lot of these leaves and areas. I need to sweep this up where the planters were and, you know, get uh, everything ready. I also moved... And I know if you've watched some of my other videos, we've got our um, chrysanthemums right here, a couple of them. We've just set up under the porch. The big fern I moved over under the porch. All these hanging. That one, eh, it's kind of died back because I split it twice and it's starting to put back out. But uh, that second split kind of did it in. But you can see all the other ferns. We split most of those back in the late, uh, early spring. And... Um, they're all doing pretty well. Our two sago palms uh, doing pretty well. You know, they'll be fine underneath the porch here and they'll just get protection from the frost. The moms, they've got a little bit of green under that so I'll probably wait as soon as this dies back a little more, clip all the dead uh, uh, blooms off and then just let it sit over winter and the spring. They should come back pretty well. So. That's what we're looking like around the urban garden here in Birmingham, Alabama. We're going to close up shop and get everything ready for the cool weather coming. And I hope you guys stay safe. Uh, if it's cold where you are, stay warm. If it's warm where you are, enjoy it. And we'll talk to you later. Be safe, guys. Bye-bye.